What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Pokemon Masters EX. Now, if you are new here to the channel um, and you do like what you see, consider heading down below and hitting that subscribe button, uh, hitting that bell as well. That way you can stay up to date on all my future videos. But uh, in today's video, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be continuing our guide series in Pokemon Masters EX and we're covering team building. So it is a fairly simple concept on paper, but with all the different characters we have in the game uh, paired up with the theme skills, certain character roles, it can be kind of hard to know who to pick for certain stages. So, and if you are a veteran player for Pokemon Masters EX, this is going to be all known to you, uh, pretty much a refresher, but you know, for those who are just starting out the game um, or very, very new to the game, you know, it can be difficult to navigate these stages and know who to pick. So this should help a little bit in that sense. So first, the basics. So in Pokemon Masters EX, there's three different roles. We have Strike, Tech, and Support. So Strikers right these are our main damage dealers they have two distinct sub roles for example if we click on barry here you'll see that he is a special striker and if we go to olivia you'll she see that she is a physical striker now, just as the name suggests, a physical striker would use physical type moves. We'll just use Olivia as an example, right? She's got rock throw as well as stone edge, both physical type moves. And if we go back to Barry, we'll see that he uses special moves. So it's kind of like the main series games, um, but yeah, that's pretty much the overview for strikers. We're gonna do a little bit later. Uh, next we have tech units. So these sync pairs are mostly focused on disrupting the opponents, ruining their plans, uh, mainly by lowering their stats, inflicting status conditions, um, stuff like that. So more recently in the game, this little side note, uh, we've been actually seeing a shift to where some tech units will straight up out damage strikers. Uh, good examples of these would be um, like Marnium or Peko, uh, even May and Swampert or Mega Swampert, rather. So these two units can do, like, crazy, crazy damage with their sync moves that parallel any strikers that are currently in the game. So tech units are just as, just as deadly as strikers. Some of them. Next, we have supports. So with supports, uh, these units are going to be the ones taking all the hits, um, but not only do they take all the hits, but they do just as their as their name suggests. They support your team by increasing stats, removing debuffs, removing status conditions, healing, all good things. So a prime example of this is got to be my boy Cygnus Suit Blue, right? They can not only increase your team's defense by using X defense all but they can also increase speed and crit hit rate with to the top, and it raises your uh, move gauge acceleration, so you're gonna be able to get those moves off a lot quicker. So, what does this all mean exactly? Uh, well, ideally, you would wanna have one of each role on your team. A striker to deal damage, a support to take damage and buff up your team, and a tech to kind of ruin the uh, <laughs> ruin the opponent's strategy, right? So a great a great example of this would be, and I think some of you know where I'm going with this. You just might. Canto Trio, right? This team has it all. They they have it all. There's a reason why. Anytime anybody has an issue with getting through a stage, they're like, okay, Canto Trio, let's just, let's get through this. I've done a Battle Villa run with just the Canto Trio, and they, they are that good. So let's go back to Cygnus Suit Blue, right? And we'll, we're going to evaluate him a little bit. So you look at his defenses. This is pre-Mega. 
defenses are 331 each. So he has pretty sure he has the highest defenses in the game once he megas. Um, but not only that, he increases the stats of your team. We already talked about X defense all end to the top. Um, so now you're getting defense, speed, crit hit. But if we go into his passives, we also have team shout nine. So it'll raise the attack or special attack or both of all allied sync pairs when the user is hit by an attack. And you're going to be getting hit because you want your supports to take the hits for you. If you go into tactics before your stages, you can adjust who gets hit first. Didn't used to be like that, but we can talk about that a little later. So once he megas, his defenses go up to a whopping 397 each. That is a very, very tough tank to get around. So that's incredible. And if we look into his uh, Syncrid, so he also has Quick Cure, Natural Remedy, which removes like trap, removes poison, just the first time though. We also have Team Triage Tank, so moderate chance, that's 40%. No, that is 30%, excuse me, of restoring the HP of all allied sync pairs when it's hit by a move. And again, it's going to be our tank, so it's going to get hit. Now, pairing that up with... Oops. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Alright, we're pairing that up with Cygnusu Leaf, and it is absolutely incredible. So, Cygnusu Blue is boosting your stats up. Now, Cygnusu Leaf with Razor Leaf hits all opponents, and we have Sundering 9, which lowers the target's defense or special defense, or both, when a move targeting an opponent is successful. So, also, thanks to this passive right here, Venomous 4, we have a 50% chance to badly poison the enemy when a move is when an attacking move is successful so razor leaf you throw that out there hit all opponents you badly poison them they're going to be taking damage and it just keeps stacking and stacking and stacking and if that wasn't enough she also has this move right here is mega healing so it reduces the user's move sync move countdown by one and if used by mega venus or reduces the sync move countdown by two and not to mention she has potion as well so you have healing disruption lowering the stats poison so you're not only going to be decreasing your opponent's capabilities you're also going to be keeping your team healthy and it wouldn't be a canto trio without i don't know why it won't let me click it that's really weird all right let's back out real quick yeah, Champion Stadium has been a little glitchy recently. But last but certainly not least, we have Cygnus Suit Red. This character is a powerhouse. So just looking at its base kit, Dire Hit 2 is going to sharply raise your crit hit rate, so that's by two levels. You also have My Destiny, which drastically raises the user's special attack and speed. So you use this twice, you're going to max out both stats. However, you use both, it's going to lower both your defense and special defense by two ranks. So, um, getting into this, right, he has two passes. So move gauge refresh, a 50% chance to charge a mover's move, user's move gauge by one when an attack is successful. Also, piercing gaze, moves never miss. That's awesome because we have heat wave which is 90% accuracy, but being that we have piercing gaze, it's gonna hit all the time. That's an AOE move, so we're gonna be hitting all opponents hard. Then we have Blast Burn, so 204 base power, and it's gonna hit all the time. So, pair that up with, like I said, Blast Burn, which is a powerful single target move, and Heat Wave, you're gonna be hitting all opponents it, this team is practically, practically unbeatable. But, so Canto Trio aside, some basic tips about team building. Right, first you want to play to your team's strengths. What I mean by this 
is, for example, if you have a special striker as your main damage dealer, which we can get an example going. Uh, let's see. I think we have a team for Lance. Yeah. Okay. So if you have a special attacker, you want to boost up their special attack because it's going to make it that much stronger. So likewise, for any team with a striker, you always want to aim to max out their critical hit rate, by th which is by three levels. So they have a 100% chance to attack for critical hits. Now, this team's good, but let me go. So this team, for example, we have Torchic, Zipstrika, and Swana. So the main striker is Zipstrika, and she's a physical attacker. So not only can she boost her own attack, but if we go over here to Torchic, he has also X attack all, so he can help with that and max that attack out. And Torchic is also a great support too. Free to play, by the way. Because you look at Blazing Hope, raises the critical hit rate of all allied sync pairs. So we're getting that critical hit rate. We're boosting that attack. All good things. So, and Swana comes into play here because it raises speed and defense. Now, if we get a MP refresh on Take Flight, it's gonna max out both stats. So your defenses are gonna be buffed up. Your speed's gonna be rocking. And with this team, it's absolutely amazing because if you look down here, ramming speed, the more the user's speed has been raised, the more it powers up moves. And inertia, pretty much the same thing, only it powers up our sync moves. So you max out your speed, you max out your attack. This team hits super hard, especially when you have those stats maxed out due to the sync grid. So, th yeah, like uh, this team can lead to in some insane damage. Um, another thing to note about your team compositions is to play off your opponent's weaknesses. I think that's pretty straightforward. I mean, even in the main series games, I mean, you don't definitely don't want to be bringing, you know, a fire type Pokemon to battle a water type because you're going to have a disadvantage. <laughs> so, um, but if you go here, right, to um, area details and boss details, um, it will give you things to focus on, and it'll say, watch out for these, so physical moves here, and special damage reduction. Some of them will have stuff like, for example, if it says you want to focus on trapping the opponents, you might want to think about bringing a sync pair that can still trap, whether it be um, Wallace and Melodic, or the free-to-play uh, Viola and Masquerine, or I guess Surf's Kit, before it evolves. Um, so always take a look at how you can get the upper hand um, so you can clear the stages a little bit easier. Um, but I should have mentioned this earlier, but when taking on a stage, try to base your striker off the weakness of the opponent. That way you can take advantage of super effective moves. Basically pretty much what I just said. So for example, this stage right here, it's dragon week. So we might want to think a little bit about bringing in a dragon striker so we can deal some extra damage. Um, lastly, so in the preset teams here, uh, what's a good example? So this team, for example, um, it's basic sand team. So what we do is Acerola sets up sand, Cynthia and Garchomp boost their stats from sand, Jasmine and Steelix all act as our tank by X defense all. Also with Clang, which applies critical hit defense and stat reduction defense. And we just keep hitting hard because sand is up and due to our passives for Cynthia and the grid we have for Cynthia, it's gonna hit super, super hard. So another good team, I just used it in the Champion Stadium video. Um, that'll be up in the top right if you guys wanna check that out. Um, but Morty Driftblim, so physical attacker. And if we look at Hilbert here, so in this together, the lower the user's HP is, the more it raises the attack of allied sing pairs. Awesome. That'll get us maxed out on our attack. But if we look at uh, Misty over here, so catch us if you can, it's gonna sharply raise our evasiveness. That's by two levels and gradually heal. So that pairs really well with Morty because we have blind spot, which says the more the evasiveness has been raised, the more it powers up sync moves. So you boost that evasion 
get max attack, you are gonna be hitting for some really, really high damage there. So, mull over these um, team building um, tips and stuff like that. Make some really cool teams that have a lot of good synergy and you'll be passing these, you know, master mode, you'll be doing battle villa, you'll be doing pretty much all the end game, all the end game stages if you just keep these in mind and, you know, kind of think about what you're doing with your teams. So, but guys, uh, that'll wrap up this video in the guide series. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little something. Um, and I hope this helped to answer the questions that you might have about um, team building and good team compositions in the game. Uh, again, my name is Brandon. If you did enjoy the video, consider dropping a like down there and subscribing. Let me know in the comments below uh, what your favorite team composition is. Um, so, all that said, I thank you all for hanging out with me today. And as always, I will see you all in the next video.